In this video, we'll be going over a powerful feature of the ION100, which is triggered advertising. So as opposed to being continuously advertising, regardless of what is happening in the environment or in any of the peripherals connected to the ION100 tag, the triggered advertising allows you to enable the advertising based on specific trigger conditions. In this video, we'll go over the different advertising trigger conditions that we can set up and do some testing and showcase the different options that we have. So let's get started. So the first test we're going to do is enable only one advertising set, but use the custom advertising type in order to include temperature data and involve the triggers and the different types of triggers, including single triggers, recurring triggers, and advertising indefinitely after the first trigger. So let's go through this. So first I have the first advertising set, which is enabled by default. And in here, I want to go into the edit and choose custom. First, before we do that, let's look at the advertising parameters. I have it set for one second. So it will advertise every one second. And then we have the public address. This I will be using to filter out the advertising packets on the mobile side. And I'll be using the NRF Connect on Android to capture the packets and see the data. So let's go back to the advertising data and go into the custom. I'm going to enable a device name just so I can recognize it. I'm using the ION100 string as a device name and I'm going to enable the manufacturer specific data. The ID included here is the default and this is the in-play company ID. If you have an ID assigned by the Bluetooth SIG then you can use that in your configuration. Now let's go ahead and go into the data Usually when you load this, it will be empty and I'm going to choose the internal temperature. So there are a few options here. I won't modify any of these options. We can look at these options later, but for now, I'm just going to include the internal temperature with two bytes. So make sure you hit append data and then hit OK. So if we go into edit and go to advertising mode, I'm going to set a triggered advertising and I'm going to choose trigger two. And now we'll go back and figure out where we need to input the value to initiate or to activate this trigger. So I have only one advertising being sent. So we can set that to three or four or whatever value that you want. Let's set it to three and let's do just a single trigger. So let's hit OK, go back to the global trigger settings. And then for trigger two, this is where we set the high threshold. So let's go ahead and convert the 27 Celsius. So 27 divided by the number from the measurement unit. And that gives us 6912. So let's go with 700 or 7,000 for the high trigger. So if I set this to 7,000, hit OK. And you can change this on-chip measurement units. Just make sure that if you are using the Eddy Stone, then this will get set automatically to a specific value that makes it match what the format is expected into the Eddy Stone. Otherwise, if you are choosing custom, you can go ahead and change the on-chip measurement unit to whatever you want to make it easier to calculate the temperature that you want to set. So let's go ahead and set triggered. I have reset the device. So there, as you can see on the mobile phone, there are no advertising packets being captured or being sent out. I'm going to run in RAM now and we should still see no advertising packets, which is what we notice right now. Now I'm going to place my finger on the chipset and raise its temperature. And when you raise the temperature, as you can see here, there are advertising packets. So this hit the 1B97. If we convert 1B97, we'll see that it's 7,063 decimals. So now, since let's go back and look at the advertising. So I selected single trigger. So I'm going to refresh the mobile app. And now I'm going to place my finger again, and we should not see any advertising packets. So this single trigger mode basically will just start advertising for three. In this case, three advertising packets sent out on each of the channels that we have selected. And once that ends, then even if we hit the trigger again, it will not send any advertising packets. So I'm placing my hand, my finger on the chipset. The temperature is raised probably above the threshold that we set. 
but we are not seeing any advertising packets. This is a rare condition or a rare use case that you would use. So normally you would use a recurring trigger or to advertise indefinitely after some kind of trigger that happens. So let's go ahead and look at the recurring trigger. So now if I reset the device, run in RAM, hit OK, and now I'm going to start scanning. There are no advertising packets because the temperature is still um, below the threshold. I'm going to place my finger now and we should start seeing advertising packets. So with the continuous advertising mode, if I am running right now and I raise the temperature, we'll see that there are advertising packets and they keep coming in until it goes below the threshold. Now keep in mind that even when you have a trigger based on a specific threshold, the advertising packets will include the current temperature. So if say, for example, we hit the, we went below the threshold and we're not triggering again, but then we still have some advertising packets that were not sent from the previous trigger, then those advertising packets could contain a temperature that's below the threshold. However, after that's done, it would not be sending any advertising packets after that. Now, if instead you want to use something like an eddy stone with a TLM packet and the TLM packet by default includes a temperature and you want that to be triggered, let's go ahead and test out that use case. So to do that, we set the advertising set number one to eddy stone and define the UID frame in that the advertising set. And I here I have the values defined. If you want to learn more about the eddy stone, advertising, then you can watch the video on that topic. So we have the first advertising packet set or the advertising set. And then we have the second one. We're going to edit it. Let's keep it in continuous until we set it up. Let's go into Eddy Stone and set it to the TLM frame. Now we go to the advertising mode and let's choose the triggered advertising and set the same advertising trigger that we set before for the custom data. So we'll use the high trigger too. And let's go ahead and just send one advertisement. For example, if a use case is you want always to have an ID included out in, and an Eddy Stone UID packet sent out, but you only want the TLM to be advertised when you hit a specific threshold, whether it's internal temperature or low battery with the VCC reading, then you can set it up this way by setting an advertising set number one to be the Eddystone UID and the second one, the advertising set number two to be the Eddystone TLM. So let's go ahead and run in RAM. And now when we refresh, we should see the Eddystone UID being set, sent out. Now here it's not including any TLM packet, as you can see. Now if I place my finger on the chipset and raise the temperature, we should eventually start seeing advertising packets with TLM information in it. And that's what we see here. And you can see the temperature was 27.7. It will rise 27.9 and so on. Another option we can do is to advertise indefinitely after the first trigger. So if we just hit the threshold or one of the triggers once, then it will continuously advertise after that. So in that case, really the advertising event count is irrelevant. It will advertise indefinitely. 